Um, so a quick review last Wednesday, basically, the last class we were talking about actual uh, topics was these, the idea of these K-maps, which we use to simplify and design um, logic circuits. So an introduction to the K-maps, there's something we call gray codes. And gray codes are simply a method of counting where only a single bit changes. Um, so a regular binary counter, we know counts down like that, for example. And the problem is that if we are activating upon a certain um, number, so for example, if we're doing something at 000, or at you know 0011, so decimal zero and decimal three, when we actually go to implement logic circuit that's operating on all those four bits, what we'll find is that there'll be some um, an intermediate value that's not as expected. So in this example, when we go from one zero zero zero, um, so decimal eight, then we go to seven zero one one one. Um, naturally, what will happen is one of the digits will be the first to change, and it could be this infinitesimally small difference before it changes first. But there will be this intermediate state that, for example, is equal to zero 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 zero. Um, so in the previous slide here, what you'd have happen is going from this to this, um, potentially this comparison will be true for a tiny, tiny amount of time. And uh, the result is that you get this unintended consequence because of that. So gray codes count in a way that only a single bit changes between each element. So here we go, 0, 0, 0, 0 1. Um, and we see here, for example, what we would call decimal 3 um, is in this position here, and then we go to what we would call decimal 2. And we're doing this because only one bit is allowed to change at a time. So this bit changes from 0 to 1, and then this bit from 1 to 0, etc. Um, I showed a quick method of generating them, and again, we just start with them written. A one-bit gray code, so just 0 and 1. Um, and then you draw a line under it, you mirror it, and then the top ones you add zeros to, and the bottom ones you add 1. So that would be the 2-bit sequence. To generate the 3-bit sequence, we write this down again. Um, and you do the same procedure. You draw a line, mirror it, and then the top you add zeros to, the bottom you add ones to. Um, and you can repeat that to generate a 4-bit gray code or however many you need. Um, so we will be using up to more or less, more mostly just 2-bit gray codes um, for these slides. But later on, you may want a larger gray code counting sequence for some project you're working on. I don't know. Um, so as an introduction to gray codes, we'll now talk about the actual K-maps themselves. So a K-map is just a way of writing the truth table, um, except we see here we're using this gray code bit so that only a single bit of the input changes between each adjacent square. Um, so for example, we see A, B is 0, 0, C is 0. The regular truth table, that would be 0. Um, a, B is 0, 1. C is 0. And again, you can just go through and look at the whole truth table um, and write it down. Typically, to save time, what we'll be doing is only writing where the 1s are falling and not the zeros. Um, each of these 1s is actually corresponding to a min term as well. So when we look at the truth table, we had this idea that wherever there's a 1, um, there's a min term, where there's a 1, there's a min term, etc. So you can imagine that each of these locations in the K-map also corresponds um, to a possible min term. So how we simplify is we just group uh, ones or min terms together that are adjacent in groups of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. So powers of 2. Um, so in this example here, we started, we drew the tooth table down, and then this would be one group um, because it's a group of four. This would be one group because it's a group of two. Yeah? Yeah, so if there is a one here, 
then you would make it a group of four like that. You always want the groups to be as large as possible within the condition that has to be one, two, four, eight, et cetera. Um, and the reason being that, there's a good example. We'll basically use these to simplify. So in the previous example, we had one, 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 and we had a group there. And say we had a one there, and we had a group there. And what we can sort of read from this, looking at the min terms, is that there'll be a portion of this term which is consistent throughout that whole group. So, for example, um, here we have A is consistent. Um, the anded with B and C, we see we get anded with B here, anded with B complement here, anded with C, anded with C complement here. Um, so the only consistent part is this A. So when we write out the equation, um, we'll call this whole group is represented just by A, because um, the rest of it basically doesn't matter. In this example here, this group, the consistent part is B and C. So this grouping of terms is B and C. Um, so just by writing that, you can then write out that the oops, um, you can write out that the simplified equation is A or B and C, and that's just by writing this down and doing the midterm. So this exact same example we were showing earlier, going through all the steps of the um, Boolean identity, so it's just a much faster way of doing it. Is the advantage of this KMAP system. Um, we can do this in the exact same way with a four input K map. So again, um, we're writing A and B here, and then the A B inputs we vary um, with a gray code pattern. So only a single bit is changing between each adjacent square. So this means, for example, from here to here, uh, we see it. The only thing that changes is B and B complement, or from any two adjacent squares like this, from there to there. D and D complements changing. Um, so that's why we use that gray code mapping of the inputs is to get this condition that only a single variable is changing. Um, when you're mapping them, you have to remember that basically it can you can go around the top or the bottom. Um, so for example, here we can actually draw a group like this. Um, where this is one term that connects here, and this is the second term that connects here. Um, and again, to just write the final equation, all we would do is we would look and say, okay, between here, A and B are the same, so they're always 0 and 1. Therefore, this term is A complement, because A is 0, and it would be, and then we would look at what else is constant. So D is always 0 in both cases ended with D complement. Um, the second term, we would say, we know C and D are one, so you can just directly write C and D, and when you look at it, you see B is always zero because A changes, so and A complement. And there you go. So the final um, equation, just go F, A complement, and B, and D complement. Um, so it's very quick. You just go from a truth table to a simplified equation. Um, in a similar way, we have the fact that you can roll around the top. Again, means that if you were given this, the simp simplest equation would be to do something like that. Um, and then here. So this is 1. This is two. Again, you want as many as possible within each group. So as an alternative, you could have just drawn a group, you know, four groups around each one, four groups of two. Um, but it's preferential to have two groups of four because it will result in simpler logic because there's more common terms. So again, here we can see one. Um, we can see what changes. So between here and here, B is always zero. So B naught. And you can see C is always 1, B0 and C. 
And for this one, D is always zero. So D is zero here. D is zero in this section of the group. Um, so D naught. And we can see A is zero for all four entries of group two. And then you can just write the final um, equation. Oh, there we go. Um, if you have four corners, again, because all the top and bottom connect, uh, you can do something like this, where you have a group of four built just from the corners. Oops. Uh, so that is a group of four, the way it all maps around. Again, if you wanted to see, well, what is this whole thing reduced down to, um, you can ask yourself, what is constant? So in each of these, D is zero. In each of these four ones, so we have D naught and then B is always zero here, D naught and B naught. Um, you can't, if you just have one one, you can't go at diagonal, so these are, you can't do that, for example. Um, if you have one one like that, you can't do that. And you can't have groups of odd numbers. So if you had, for example, that, um, you can't make a group of three. That's all wrong. You have to make you have to make a group of two here, two there, basically. Um, that's all the rules written out in one slide, so I won't go through all those. There may be multiple solutions to the same thing. It's not necessarily unique, um, and I won't go through a full example. But in the, all the slides, there's a few examples. So the vote taker one. Again, you just go through and you look at where are the ones. So A is 0, B is 1, which is this point here. And then when C is 1, Y is 1. Um, so we put a 1 there. A is 1, B is 0, C is 1. And C is A, B, 1, 1, C, 0, get a 1. And 1, 1, 1, we get a 1. And turn this one. No. Nope. Um, so in this case, when you group them again, the best we can do here is groups of two, like that. And then you can find the simplified equation. I won't go through all the examples. So if we have two output variables, like in a full ladder, for example, so we have sum out and carry out, you just do two separate maps, one for each of the um, output variables. So in this case, you end up with two equations, basically. When you draw the circuit, it may have some interconnection, but it may not. It's effectively just two separate uh, devices. Another example, say if we had a comparator, so um, when AB taken as the decimal number is greater than CD, the output's one. Um, something like this is pretty straightforward to uh, draw out, so this is a good example because you can say if this is one input number, you can really quickly draw where is it higher than the other input number. Um, so something like that. And, and then you can group them together again, so you'd have something like a group of four here. Um, again, you can't do groups of three, so you have to do a group of two there maybe a group of two there. And you can go through and find what the um, result of each of these groups is. So to take one example here, the constant here, we know C is zero, so we have C naught, and A is one, so that one C naught and A. Um, in this one, A and B are always one, one, so A and B, and D is always zero. D naught, and for this group, um, we have C and D are zero because it's in this row. C naught and D naught, and B, because um, B is one in both of them. And if you OR the two, all those, you'll get this sum of products forms. You may have don't cares in the truth table, which are cases where it doesn't matter what the output is. Um, all you do here is when you're putting the ones down, you can make the don't care is one or zero. So, for example, we have 
a, b, 0, 1, c of 0 is a don't care, so question mark. Um, 0, 1, 1 is 1. 0, 1 is 1. 1, 1, 0 is 1. And 1, 1, 1. Um, so if we have something like this, for example, what you'll notice is that we can make these as is. The best we can do is just individually group them, um, which isn't a very simplified form, because we have three terms, um, or three literals. Each literal will have three variables in it. But if we make these ones, because the user doesn't care what the output is, so we make it a one, um, you then get a group of four and a group of two. Um, so instead, now we just have two literals. And this literal, for example, um, is just equivalent to b. Um, because that's the only constant, b is 1. And then this literal, you can see, is to a and it was c. Um, so now we've greatly simplified our implementation. It doesn't matter. Uh, product of sum mapping, before we talk about sum of products, so product of sum, we use zeros. Um, in the table instead of the ones. So this is convenient when, as in this truth table, there's a bunch of ones and only two zeros. Um, so using sum of products, which is what we were using before, we'd have to break down all the locations of the zeros, so, or all the locations of the ones, sorry. So you'd have one there, um, zero, one, one there, one there. One there, one, one. So then you would go through and make your groups. Um, alternatively, using product of sum, you just put down the two zero locations and then make your group of two. Um, again, when you're using product of sum, it's similar to how we use the max terms, um, doing product of sum from the truth tables. So in this example, uh, what you would see is we would have a plus b plus c um, because we want to generate a zero from these input variables. So when a is zero, b is zero, c is zero, or them together, you get zero. In this case, a is one, so a complements or with b or with c. Um, and you'll have f equals Um, so that's the product of sum format, where we use zeros. With five input variables, you can basically use two of the four input variable maps. For one of them, the fifth input variable is zero, and for the other one, the fifth input variable is one. Um, when you do this, we won't be doing it in class because it gets crazy. Effectively, what's happening is that the two of them are overlaid on each other. Um, so, for example, if we had a 1 here and a 1 here, with a 5 input variable, it's legitimate to group these two ones together um, because they actually lay over top of each other. So you can imagine two sheets of paper sort of overlaid. Exactly. So this is 3D to go to 6. You start to add extra dimensions to it. Um, for something like this, this is where you can see the product of sum or sum of products it becomes convenient. Um, because in this example, it's not, you know, this is not that much more complicated than the second one I showed. Um, but if you're dealing with, say, you know, a 3D version of it, to have only two of them that you have to consider, where the two of them might be on different levels, it is a lot easier than, say, you know, five where they're on different levels. Um, for checking your results, there's some open source free software um, you can use. And basically, you put in a truth table. They'll show you the K map. And you can view it in some of product or product of some form. Um, so if you want some extra practice or you want to check results for assignments or for anything, this is a good way to do it um, because it shows you how it's achieving that. So you can see all of the product terms. Um, and of course, this may give you a different answer because not every possible K-map is a unique solution. Um, there might be more than one way of mapping it, of taking the groups.
Um, so that was a review of last class. I'll take a quick break and then move on to the new stuff.